everyone. Today we will be focusing on plant and animal adaptations. Plants and animals are constantly challenged by the world around them. When they are hunting, searching for food, or even sleeping, they are challenged by other organisms or by hostile environmental conditions. They may also have difficulty finding food or mates. In order to survive, animals have developed special protective characteristics over time. Adaptations are features that make an organism well suited to its surroundings. They may be physical characteristics that affect structure or appearance, or behavioral characteristics that affect how an organism acts. They give an organism a better chance of surviving and reproducing in a particular environment. It is important to note that adaptations are inherited characteristics. This means that they are passed on from one generation to the next. An organism already has all of its special adaptations when it is born. Here we see an example of the polar bear and some of the adaptations it has that make it well suited to its habitat. A characteristic is a structure, behavior, or ability that distinguishes an individual organism or group of organisms, a species, from others. These characteristics are known as adaptations and represent either physical or behavioral adaptations. Some specific examples of physical adaptations include camouflage and mimicry. And some specific examples of behavioral adaptations include hibernation and migration, which we'll take a closer look at. Adaptations that affect the way an organism looks are called physical adaptations. Physical characteristics include the structure of physical features, such as long pointy front teeth of a cat, and the needle-like fur of a porcupine. Almost any structure that an organism has can be attributed to an ad adaptation to its environment. Physical adaptations are physical features of an organism. For example, the shape of a wing, uh, the number of legs, the color or pattern of the fur, the shape and size of a bird's bill, the size and shape of an animal's teeth, or the shape and color of a flower all directly contribute to a species' ability to survive. You have physical adaptations as well. For example, your skin has sweat glands that help you keep a constant body temperature no matter how hot or cold it is. When it is hot, sweat glands release water onto your skin. The water evaporates and as a result you become cooler. When it's cold, sweat glands do not release water and you stay dry and warm. If your body gets too cold, you will start to shiver to try and maintain body temperature. Some types of physical ad adaptations are very specific. For example, an organism's ability to blend into its surroundings is called camouflage. Camouflage hides animals as they wait for food to pass by or when predators are near. Can you see the organism pictured here? The sand-like pattern and color on the starry flounder fish is in the image uh, make it blend in with the sand on the ocean floor where it lives. Flounders use cryptic coloration to blend in. They can change color depending on the type of sand. As larvae, they have an eye on each side of their head, but as they mature, one eye migrates or moves. This is a physical adaptation that allows them to lie on the bottom of the ocean and prevents it from becoming an easy meal. Physical adaptations also include the coloring of the skin, fur, and body coverings. For example, the weasel has white fur that blends in with the snow in the winter, making it harder for prey to see them. In the spring, they grow a new, darker pelt. This is an inherited characteristic that helps the weasel survive. 
other organisms camouflage themselves by mimicking the shape of something, possibly even, even another organism. Looking like something else, a natural object, or an organism that stings or tastes bad, is a physical adaptation called mimicry. Have you ever been stung by a bee or a wasp? This experience would have taught you to avoid buzzing black and yellow striped insects such as the yellow jacket wasp. Animals that eat insects avoid wasps too. Insects with the bright coloration of the yellow jacket wasp tend to sting. However, there are insects that have the same coloration as the yellow jacket wasp such as the adult hoverfly pictured here that do not sting. Looking like an animal that does sting can help the fly to avoid being eaten by its predators. Not all adaptations are physical. As I pointed out earlier, an organism may have behavioral adaptations. Behavioral adaptations are habits and activities of organisms that are important for survival. Some examples include nest building, migration patterns, hibernation, courtship or mating dances, communication, defending territory, foraging behaviors, and plant, and plant responses to light and gravity. For example, chipmunks collect and store food so they can find it in the winter. Opossums play dead to confuse predators, and plants grow towards the sunlight to capture more. Hibernation is a period of time when animals are much less active and use a lot less energy than usual. During hibernation, the body temperature drops and the heart rate and other body processes slow down to conserve energy. Hibernation gives animals a better chance of surviving in the winter when there isn't much food available. Animals that hibernate typically eat vast amounts of food to build up body fat before hibernation. This fat fuels the animal's body for its slowed down body processes. For example, grizzly bears hibernate for part of the winter. Grizzly bears overwinter in dens that they excavate or dig out when, and then line with leaves, grasses, spruce or fir branches, and pine needles. Denning occurs from October to November Sorry, denning occurs from October or November to April or May, depending on the location. The further north, the longer the denning period. Some other examples of animals that hibernate include bats, chipmunks, and squirrels. Migration is another type of behavioral adaptation. Migration is the movement of animals from one region to another in response to a change in seasons. Many animals including many mammals, birds, and insects, often migrate when there are changes in temperature or the number of hours of daylight, which means that less food will be available. In North America, about two-thirds of bird species fly south in the fall to areas where food will be available during winter. The birds fly north in the spring to areas where they breed. Monarch butterflies fly south um, and winter in the mountains of Mexico. Many species of whales also migrate. Well, that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching.